Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. It's a Friday. We thank God for it. Uh, but uh, uh, Dr. G.D. Johnson is one of my guests. And I always say, why do we make a special thing about TGIF and not TGIM for Monday, T for Tuesday, W, TGIW? Why do we just wait for Friday? Everybody loves Friday. Friday, <laughs> Friday is a weekend. Friday is a weekend. And um, being the weekend, um, it's time to, to relax. And um, a relaxation is good for for. For, for the body, you know, there's you say that. Nursery rhyme we used to say, all work and no play. Makes Jack about Jack uh, uh, a dull boy. Dull, uh, Remember boy. back in the day, there was also a song, a very popular song at the time. Everybody loves Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. There you go. For, so. for Saturday, night, Saturday night is for, Saturday night is for grooving. It's for grooving, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, um, here we are now. Thank you very much, Dr. Jide Johnson, for coming along. Uh, we also have on the set today, uh, Comrade Balasaka. Uh, Comrade Balasaka is a man of many parts. At one time, he's a geologist, he's a petroleum engineer, um, he's a commentator on the uh, oil, oil, oil landscape, you know, a crude landscape, and um, generally, he's a valuable person to have this morning. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Comrade. Uh, Bala Zaka, and I will say Baraka is uh, the, the, the Jumat. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. And the, the, the Jumat one here, yeah, you took Everything, it. Everything, and I, do, <laughs> I, I, I salute your, your viewers across the globe. Thank you, sir. Indeed. Yes, well, sir. I, I like the spirit because we started off on a bright note. Now, let's see if it can be dampened. Uh, not that I want to dampen it, yes, sir. but as you know, uh, Hamid Ali, Controller General of Customs, uh, when he was at the House of Representatives the other day, the Committee on Finance, um, I don't know if to call it a bombshell, but he did drop something and he said, hang on, NMPC Limited's figures simply do not add up. Don't, they don't add up. Somebody's got to convince me. And for those of us that know pretty little about it, by the time he did the analogy of how many tankers it would require we just grab hold of that one because we don't know very much about it but we got to interrogate that particular one say it just doesn't add up the amount of liters of fuel that is said to be disappearing into thin air uh, just doesn't add up now let me start um uh, on this matter with um uh, if it's okay let me start with you uh, comrade balazaka thank you sir the charge specifically that the figures don't add up that government is intending to rely upon because we're talking about the proposed uh, budget 11 trillion deficit and uh, uh, you know the colonel hamid ali retired was querying those figures uh, what's he on about do you think there's anything at all to it well uh, first of all uh, when he was querying i uh, i need to get certain things clear mm -hmm. before i i, I hit uh, the to the left the or to the right, mm -hmm. was he querying whether that the quantity was too small or the quantity was on the high side? That's my question, but I want it clarified. But honestly, as I speak to you now, uh, I will want you to quote me that I said, considering the level of carelessness in Nigeria, considering the level of moral insolvency, Mm -hmm. a moral bankruptcy of some Nigerians and some Nigerian leaders. Quote me that I said, if the crude oil and gas that we were having in Nigeria today were not to be a God-given natural resource, it would have disappeared from Nigerian reservoirs into the reservoirs of nations that are more organized. Okay. Quote me that I said so. Mm -hmm. Just like the vegetation that we have in Nigeria today, the green lands that we are having in Nigeria today and our complaint of hunger and lack of food security, if it were not to be natural gift from nature, they would have disappeared to other countries. Just as, as, as I speak to you, there are some countries that are landlocked. But look at the rivers, look at the streams, look at the oceans. If some countries were to have what we were blessed with, if it were not to be a natural resource, I'm telling you the rivers will have disappeared to more organized <laughs> countries and more focused <laughs> leaders. So coming to the point we are discussing, we're talking about energy security here. As far as I'm concerned, if anybody tells me that Nigeria is consuming 
100 liters of PMS in particular, mm -hmm. I will not doubt it at all. Okay. And the reasons are simple. Before I got here, you see shops open. You see barbers walking. You see hairdressers walking. You see banks walking. There is no energy. There is no electricity. Many people cannot afford this diesel that we are talking about. Even in Lagos, that is the commercial hub of the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. banks are now shutting down at, at as early as 1, 1 p.m. But Some I, but, banks don't open. What we are saying, but as the you said, requirement... The diesel, the diesel cannot be, it's not affordable to go. Not but affordable. We're not talking so about every, diesel here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Everybody is going back to petrol. So the consumption is huge. So the consumption is huge. So you think that you almost 100 liters, which the, is the claim, the that 98 day, million liters like of fuel day, they every said, day. Yeah, like the other day, they said the minister mm. said, oh, the consumption was high. And I said, would you respect to the minister for finance? All those adjoining places she sees at night looking lit. They are not looking lit because there, there is electricity. They are not looking lit because there is petrol, diesel. All of them are looking for energy source, and they are using generators. And those generators are running on uh, petrol. So okay. when we get to smuggling, mm -hmm. we can discuss the aspect that has to do uh, with, with uh, you know with, uh, with, 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 exactly with, with him. because it was also part of the claim of uh, the NMPC that um, a lot of fuel, a lot is actually being smuggled out. Uh, and as you know, the question has come about that. Oh, how will I mean, he just made it seem look ludic ludicrous that you can't have a whole convoy of trailers. What roads will they pass through? That was the way he was going. But uh, in, in relation to a part of what uh, uh, Bala uh, started off with, he said that such a figure was not feasible. You know, I'm quoting him directly now from uh, our newspaper reports. Uh, unless the NMPC is saying that Nigerians fill their tanks, uh, the tanks of their cars every day, uh, there is no way 60 million liters of fuel can be consumed daily without the figure changing. Now, you know, um, it is sad that we have found ourselves in the decision we have found ourselves in. And the, every, the easiest excuse that has been given by those that have added NNPC, that is a state institution that is beyond the state, that is bigger than the state, that has no level of accountability, fiscal responsibility, that has no record, is that oh, the challenges they are having is that the products are being smuggled. Now, according to claim of NNPC, you recall about, I think in the beginning of this week or late last week, the NNPC GMD was at the state house to give a press conference talking about what they would what they are doing concerning the privatization concerning what they would do moving moving forward and the challenges they are having and what they are going to do to secure the pipelines and the rest and the rest of it now if we consume 98 million mm -hmm. as well, what well, nnpc released well, yes. and nigerians are consuming 60 million daily according to their record mm -hmm. now you are now shifting the blame and that's why immediately you are shifting the blame that there is an Agency of government that is responsible to protect what comes in and that has and what wanted. goes out. Mm -hmm. Now you are making Amid Ali and his and his agents to be complicit, and that's why Amid Ali said you cannot justify, and we need these interagency checks and balances and accountability. From what Amid Ali has said, it's very clear that something is wrong somewhere because I fueled my car every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I fill the tank. Okay, that happens to be your habit. And that's my habit. Yes. I fill it every Sunday. That's when I fill, I fill the tank to the brim. Now, uh, Ali, uh, uh, so, sorry, based on what? One, one second. Ali, Ali says, you know, in, in the report that, um, quote, from this information, NMPC is claiming that 38 million liters of fuel are smuggled out. It'll take 500 trucks to smuggle that quantity of fuel out of Nigeria. Which roads do they pass without being caught? Exactly. That takes the rule of custom. If they are passing through Nigeria, they'll pass through the borders. 
You are now telling that custom is failing to do what they are supposed to do. And at least we need this type of cross-firing from agency of government. Now, it has thrown light to, because he's asking the question, how do you justify the 11 trillion? We have removed subsidy from other mm -hmm. products. We mm -hmm. have removed from this zoo. Mm -hmm. Like he said, which is the truth, most organizations are, convert, are converting back to petrol gen now. Because it is cheaper and yes. better for you to use petrol gen than for than you to the use diesel one. This, Even though it's said to the, be more powerful the, and the industrial. More powerful mm. and industrious. So that brings the challenge. Who pays for this 11 trillion subsidy? That's the question Ali is asking. Indeed. And that question needs to be put across to them. And Ali also remarked that here we are discussing this at the House of Representatives again this year. He said he recalls that last year we discussed this whole subsidy thing, and as far as he's concerned, it's more of a sham than anything else. Okay, now I will talk uh, on the side of Ali, even though he used a phrase or a word there, not feasible. You see, let's take it. I'm happy we're discussing as Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, around this time, I was on an international media organization, and we were discussing. In fact, I was rubbished because we were discussing about aviation fuel, airlines, and the rest. With all my knowledge in the oil and gas industry, I was rubbished. But let us discuss Ahmed Ali now. What we are hearing about smuggling, as far as I'm concerned, quote me, is just one of the many lies people like me said we are always being proffered to justify deregulation to re justify removal of, of uh, uh, subsidy on the price of the only product that is remaining. Because we've removed subsidy on the price of kerosene, diesel, aviation fuel, and we've not seen anything. Before now, there were discussions, lies that if we, dis if we remove the prices, we are going to be competitive. We were going to see investors. One investor hasn't come. So when they were talking about, when, when the many lies were coming, one of the lies was that we were losing to smugglers. Mm -hmm. Before we knew what was happening, they said there were so many Nigerians having so many cars. We let her discover these things were lies. The letter came up and said, okay, well, well, lies okay, or, okay. Or inaccuracies. Okay, inaccuracies. <laughs> then the letter told us that they were going to give us that the cars we are having in Nigeria were internal combustion engine cars. They were going to give us gas-driven cars. We discovered those things couldn't hold water or even hold gas. They tied everything to coronavirus. We discovered coronavirus days are gone. Other economies are ramping up and requiring energy. So they, they meandered, meandered, and they have not moved and are tying things to, to even uh, Ukraine, Russian hostilities. The truth as we speak today is that the Nigerian oil and gas industry is not doing well. The model we are using is the wrong one. And if we continue this at, 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 on this track, in fact, we are already at the cliff edge. Mm -hmm. Very soon, the country will sink into, into, into the valley. And you, you know, the answers are, are straightforward also. Look at Nigeria as we speak. Nigeria is a member of OPEC. No OPEC nation today or member countries endowed with crude oil and gas are complaining. And most of them have stayed on functional refineries. Rather, this is the time of Udoji for them. This is the time of boom because there is energy crisis. Just imagine, and let me tell you, in the course of my discussion with, with somebody from a, an international finance uh, corporation, you know, uh, no, an international financial institution, he said even if Nigeria refines internally, that what we are going to be saving may just be five naira per litre. And I said, oh, so there will even be savings. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Assuming the consumption of petrol we are having of 70 million liters per day, since you say we can even save. What do you mean if we well, are they, refining? They said 60. They said 60 million. Even if it is 60. Mm. But you said we can even save 5 naira per and liter. So which means if we are refining internally every day, we are going to save 5 naira times 60 million uh, liters. That means we are going to save yes. 300 million naira. Multiply that by, uh, by savings in a week. Multiply that by savings in a month and a year. So, sir, so would I be right if I said 
there is a collusion or connivance to make sure Nigeria does not even refine and produce distillates. Then I also asked, told them again, I said, many of you are just telling Nigeria to continue on the wrong track. Why not ask or discuss with our Nigerian leaders, since some of you have access to them, and tell them that let Nigerian leaders for once imagine that those countries that are every day selling 60 million liters of PMS, so so million Nigeria liters PMS. of diesel, so so million liters of kerosene to Nigeria. Imagine how much they are making from Nigeria. I, I, Why can't Nigeria be the one on selling to the other nations? On, on that point, uh, you, uh, what do you think? Because um, uh, Colonel, you know, uh, Ali, you are retired. Uh, he also asked the question. Look, NMPC says it is, you know putting out there 98 million. It also is saying that 60 million of that is consumed by Nigerians. So the question is, why are you doing that? Why are you putting out 98 million? How, why, why is the system allowing this if it is 60 million that we are producing? And then let's talk about the, the, the difference of, of 38. So it, it seems that he's broken it down to such a, if you want, simplistic level so that people who don't even know very much about it can ask these questions. But you know what? That, that's a good one. Why don't you answer that? You say 60 million, right? Then why are you putting out 98 million consistently and then claim that it is stolen, it is smuggled out? Where are they smuggling it out from? Um, I didn't know whether it was the chief of NAVA staff that made a statement, but one of the NAVA yes. chiefs made a statement that um, Nigerian crude oil was being stolen and vessels were being arrested without having papers. And then after the vessels have been arrested, papers will be sent indicating that those vessels have license to... It was last week. Mm -hmm. what I'm, it was mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. that this chief made, made, made that statement. These people are committing crime against humanity. They are committing crime against the state. And such level of crime should be, treat, should be treated as stressing and felony. But what do we have? It seems they are untouchable. Well, those involved. With, with those with those involved because, because if you look at if if you look at those that have been consumed by crisis in the energy sector particularly nnpc as of red members some that have gone to jail in terms of doing oversight function in terms of collecting money for their failure to do what they are supposed to do then you begin to wonder what is really wrong with nnpc and i think that the best approach for us for nnpc is to go the nitel way imagine if we still have NITEL, as NITEL used to be, without us having full privatization of the telecom sector, no, what do you liberalization. think? Liberalization. Liberalization. What, what, what do you think will, 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 will the telco industry be? We have seen other, other actors participating in it. Like he pointed out, Aramco is a state-owned oil company. Petronas. Aramco is for Saudi Arabia. Petronas is for Brazil. And then you wonder, uh, even Venezuela that had internal crisis, that do not have what you can call, quote unquote, the Western democratic model, is not even having the issues we are having with the kind of oil theft and pilot that we have in the Nigerian sector. Indeed. Uh, uh, See, yes. Let me tell you. Do you want to sh help no, shed a bit yes, of light but, on that whole question yeah, about the difference between 98 million uh, lifted I, I, I and 60 million that, used this, and that balance of 38 yeah, million? Yes. I, I'm somebody who tries to be very, very objective before I support any government leader mm -hmm. or any government appointee. But on this case, or in this case, I am on the side of Ahmed Ali. But do you know the reason is because smuggling was one of the reasons that were presented to want to justify increase in the price of uh, petrol. Because we were told that the petrol was always being smuggled to neighboring countries because it was cheaper che there. And if we up our price to equilibrate theirs, then there will be no smuggling. And I said, it's just like you saying, if you are providing, before you provide food, you know, nutritious food to your children, you must look at the kind of food and the quality of food that your neighbor is eating before you judge. How can you say because you are suspecting smuggling? So the only way to stop smuggling is to up the price of 
refined petroleum product here, an imported one for that matter, to be the same with country X, Y, Z, and in that case, you are going to discourage uh, smuggling. smuggling. You see, that was um, that was why you, you, you said I should use one of the... I, did, I wanted to use the word lies, and you said I should use one of those <laughs> inaccuracies. Inaccuracies. So they were many. <laughs> because please, I'm trying to please, sir. With due find respect, my way around. With due respect, if you look at Nigeria, honestly, so many shameful things are happening about this country. But till today, we are still see, being seen as the continental hub for the continent of Africa in terms of energy, in terms of education. But within, we are not doing well. Because if you are talking like this about distillates, what about the entire oil and gas industry? As I'm speaking to you now, quote me that I said, in the whole of Nigeria today, we don't have up to 15 active drilling rigs. And if you don't have active, uh, active drilling rigs, how can you drill? How can you get into the reservoirs? How can you produce crude oil? How can you meet up with your opaque quota? How can you even meet up with your budget volume to make sure you breach budget deficit. So when you look at it, there are so many things that you cannot explain. And do you know that until probably two months ago, a Nigerian was the person, Al led Alhaji Sanusi Barkindo, was the person presiding over, over that, a whole cartel. Mm -hmm. And it is only in your own country that you have a principle of you are producing so much beans, but if you need to eat akara or moi moi, you will go and buy from an outsider that does not produce beans. Okay. Or you want to one, one eat. moment. Let me bring in uh, Fidel. Uh, good morning, Fidel. Thank you for holding on. Go right ahead now. Thank you very much. Uh, I expect the Nigerian customs to live up to expectation. They shouldn't. If what should bother them is protecting our borders, whether NNPC claims are correct or not. But in this country, we have not taken the oil sector seriously. We must grant license to individuals to run modular refineries or even some organizations and make sure that we, so, we, 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 we ensure the supply of these products. And the, our refineries must be made to work. We have not given it attention. That is why we are suffering. It's like some people are really benefiting from importation. And it does not go well for the development of this country. Let us do something and improve the oil sector. Thank you. I'm Fidel Onyeneke. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, uh, Fido. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I wonder if you were saying that largely customs should stay in its lane. Uh, well, it seems to be. But uh, there, there is an interrelationship that there, exists among. There's a connection, really. Agencies of government. And don't also know that custom is a revenue generating agencies of government. And, and they um, say they are on track to, yeah, so, to, to, to so continually if, increase if, if, receivables. If, if, if we do a comparative analysis, of customs contribution to the Nigerian economy in terms of the revenue they bring in and what NNPC has done, you discover that customs is even more accountable than NNPC. You see, what we are saying is this. Nigeria is a monoproduct economy. And your economy is built on your energy. And because it's built on your energy, it should be the drivers of other sectors. However, if what you base your economy on is imported, like he used the illustration of beans and akara. Mm. It's, it's, it's very clear for an average. It, we, when we begin to talk the technical terms, but when the NNPC, uh, when the custom um, control general made his illustration, an average person on the street could understand it. Okay. Just like your beans and akara mm -hmm. illustration, mm -hmm. it opened a perspective to why would you have beans? and be importing Akara, Akara and Moi Moi, and moi, moi. When from people that don't have this. It means that something is wrong somewhere and some people are making money from this system and they will never make it to work. Indeed. One moment. Uh, Bernard in Enugu. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, uh, Uncle Yoli. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning to the, good morning to the guests in the studio. Sure. I think uh, my contribution goes this way. Until, uh, unless we, we have a functional refinery in Nigeria. We are not going to make a headway. That is what the present administration promised us. And we supported them that they should come. Because the previous government, the, gov the president has been the minister of petroleum. And still, still, it's not that we don't have money. There are money, but they have been shifted to other sectors. If we, ca if we cannot do refinery, let us support the state or those modern refineries to, to work. So that if the refinery work in Nigeria, 
the rush for dollar will reduce and Nigeria will gain its value. And since we will, since we will let TV be okay in Nigeria. So if the government didn't do it, we will pray that the successive government, the one that is coming, will do so that the things will be better for Nigeria. That finally is a key factor. I would not have this. There's no progress in Nigeria. That's my situation. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, indeed, go going back to, um, I think it was... Um, I, I, it was Peter, I think, who brought it up uh, about customs staying in, Eden, in their lane. Well, as we said, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interconnection. Uh, uh, the customs uh, boss has said that um, um, the customs is doing its best to do its job. He says the service has generated uh, 1.167 trillion as of uh, July this year, Naira, and, and that it has projected to generate the sum of 2.872 trillion, and after that, even higher. So it seems it's focused. It knows what it, it knows what it's doing, but he seems to be coming against muddying the waters. Yes. With custom is just being dragged, and I'm happy for the first time. This the, the, the custom wants to pull itself out. And mm -hmm. let me explain this simple thing to you. You see, the, between you and I, with due respect, and I'm happy to say this, I have never had any relationship with government. I've not worked for government, I'm not a politician, I wasn't in government scholarship, so I can talk with all amounts of confidence. But I had the opportunity of attending courses within Nigeria and overseas with so many NNPC staff. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, they are as intelligent as you and I. What we are having is leadership issue. What we are having is political interference. And for the purpose of discussions, this is the way I want to define leaders. As far as I'm concerned, leaders are, part, are Nigerian citizens that other Nigerians, like you and I, decided to hand over our economic, political, and social destiny for them to, to manage for us in national interest. Indeed. And to be honest and to be fair to some of us Nigerians, our leaders have not been doing the right thing, not all of them. Because you're talking about a country where the last time we constructed a refinery was around 1989 or 1990. And you're talking about like 30 years now. The generation of leaders we've been having didn't deem it fit to maintain the refineries they inherited or even build new ones. Do we need anybody to tell us that we're going to run into energy crisis? Between 1990 and now, strategic industrial sectors have been increasing. Strategic domestic and commercial sectors have been increasing, and they will require energy. The population of Nigeria has been increasing. And you're talking about a country of like 200 million citizens relying on less than 10,000 megawatts of electricity. We're not talking about a country of 5 million or 20 million citizens. Do we need anybody to tell us that there will be energy crisis? Okay, let's say... The military were illiterate, they didn't know what they were doing. But what about from 1999 to now? Even if we were building one refiner, constructing one refiner in, in, in 10 years, we, by now we should be able to have two brand new refiners. And if those op countries, OPEC countries, Brazil, Norway, I mean, Saudi Arabia, the, Malaysia, Venezuela. Libya, Iran, Iraq are having functional and state-owned refineries. Are we saying they are, they are fools? Okay. And keep, if they are keep not your, fools, who keep, is the fool here? Keep your gunpowder dry because I know you want to come in. Let me take a quick break. Come back. There will be less interruptions.